may have seemed impossible at one time. So how did you do it? You started with a concrete vision of what you wanted and you focused on it continuously, didn't you? Wherever focus goes, energy flows. You envisioned something, you got clear about it, and then you started thinking about all the reasons why you wanted it. You got excited about it. Said, this is what's next for me now. I want this. You may have dreamed about it, thought about it, talked about it. But when you focus on something continuously, something magical happens. You get insights, don't you? You overhear a conversation and you hear something you wouldn't have heard if you didn't have that outcome or goal that you wanted so badly. Who's ever come up with something, obsessed about it, didn't even know how to do it, and it just happened and it came together? So why don't we tap into that power now for your business and life? One of the things that human beings underestimate dramatically is their capacity to get great at something if they're totally immersed in it, totally laser focused on something. You are way more powerful than you know you are if you went crazy, psycho, obsessed, laser focused on anything, even something you're totally ill prepared for. Humans have an unreal capacity to get great at things, even if they don't have a natural talent for it, if they're immersed in it, and to learn something and acquire a ton of knowledge in a short period of time as well. Because the truth of the matter is, in society today, society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win, to just divert your focus and attention. Look over here. Look at this shiny thing. Look at this TV show. Look at this sports team. Worry about what's going on here in this war. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives and just get us distracted so we never get obsessed we never get laser focused for an extended period of time ask yourself truthfully your big goals and dreams are you really clear on what they are because if you don't have that we can't even get started you know how mandatory it is to be clear and specific for what you want right can you get laser obsessively focused almost to its exclusivity almost but for an extended period of time can you honestly say you've done that for an extended period? I'm talking about a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, even a decade towards something you want so badly. You want it like oxygen. It's like you want it like you want to eat. You want it like you want to live, right? Well, are you extendedly laser focused on it or do you get distracted easily? There are two ways to be successful, right? And I don't subscribe to the first one. That's just natural talent. I, and I just don't believe people who are naturally talented are better than me. I, I believe effort, and you've heard me say it. Your mama might, your mama might come from privilege. Your daddy might come from privilege. Your daddy might own a company. You might come from privilege. You might have a father that can give you everything your little heart desires, but you will not outwork me. Why? Because I realize that the bigger the dream, the more effort you're going to have to put in. And for those of you who raise your hand and put up 70%, you'll never see it. When you said to yourself, when the ball comes out, this is what I want to accomplish. You're not the only person that wants to accomplish it. And now I ask you this question. What do you do when a thousand other people want exactly what you want? What do you do when you're not the only one that wants to make a million dollars in your company? You're not the only one that wants to be the president. You're not the only one that wants to be the CEO. What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want? You have to outwork them. You got to outgrind them. You got to get up earlier. You got to stay up later. You've got to execute and you've got to go from 70. I think there's a different level for you. I mean, I think there's a different level for you to get obsessed, crazy, laser focus. I say all the time, our obsessions become our possessions, but we won't possess them if we're not truly obsessed. I bet there's been a person in your life you've been obsessed with. How many times a day did they distract you from what you were doing with just the thought of them? In other words, this is what I want you to understand. When you're laser obsessed focused, your obsession distracts you from what you're currently doing, not the other way around. You're not really obsessed with it if you're easily distracted from it. This is so important. You right now can test whether it's your obsession with whether it distracts you constantly. The first thing you think of when you wake up, last thing before you go to bed. When you have a big laugh, it comes up. When you cry, it comes up. When you're watching TV, it comes up. When you're doing your regular job, but it's your side hustle, it comes up. You can't stop thinking about it. It distracts you from the rest of your life. That's what an obsession does. When it's not really your obsession, the rest of your life distracts you from it. And so the it in your life is so important, but there's all these things that distract us today. I'm going to give you a recommendation. Turn your damn TV off. Turn the radio off most of the time.
Turn your phone off a lot too. So here's the deal. The TV's competing constantly to distract you with stuff that really doesn't matter. And I'm not saying, by the way, don't be informed, don't know what's going on in the world, because that makes you more interesting, right? You should know what's going on in the world. Don't be so obsessed with them. Be obsessed with your own reality TV program called your own life. I don't need you to get so consumed with the money. I don't need you to get so consumed with college. I don't need you to get so consumed with the stuff. Listen to me, this is how you do it first. Over six, seven years ago, with no money, no human resources, no building, no funding, no support. The first thing we did was we dreamed, we wrote the dream down, we slept the dream, we ate the dream, we rehearsed the dream, we looked at the dream, we talked about the dream, we slept with the dream, we woke up to the dream, we wore the dream, and now boom, it's our reality. And for some of you, you stop dreaming. You dream for a week and you stop because things around you don't look good. You dream for a month and when you get hit in the mouth, you quit and you give up. You dream for a while and when people tell you crazy, and when people tell you stupid, and when people tell you can never get done, you stop dreaming and you go back to knowledge. And I dare you to use your imagination. I dare you when you're broke to use your imagination. I dare you when you're rich to use your imagination. I dare you under every single circumstance, keep dreaming, keep looking at your dream, keep focusing on your dream, keep going after the dream because that's where true success is. I started going to work earlier. I started being the last one to leave there. I started working harder than anybody else. The other guys could not. Why would you work so hard, Les? I said, I'm not working for them. I have been cheating, Bert, I thought. I've been cheating myself and my family. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. Before in April 1954, the common belief, the universal belief, because it had been tried again and again and again and people had failed, the belief was that man was not physically capable of breaking the four minute barrier that he could not run a mile in less than four minutes. That was the belief on the planet. It had never been done. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along and he broke the four minute barrier. Now here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. 20,000 people, what changed? Here's what happened when they got on the track. They knew it had been done. And because they knew it had been done, there was a new belief about this barrier, about this goal that was unreachable. And those 20,000 people got in a race believing knowing in their heart that someone had done it, that it's possible that they could do it. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it, it's possible. And that if someone can make their dream become a reality, that it's, it's possible that you can make your dream become reality. And so as you begin to look at where you want to go, beginning to embrace that it's possible i'm blessed and highly favored i've got a lot going for me i got some good stuff in me and it's possible that i can bring my greatness out here in the universe that i can do what i want to do it's possible i can write my own book i can have my own business i i can take the trip and travel around the world it's possible I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible, regardless of where I am, that things can get better for me. It's possible. I'm thinking about two men right here in Chicago who are fairly successful, similar background, educated. They worked for a corporation for many years, and they were among many people that were laid off. Two guys who were very good friends. One went out looking for a job for several weeks along with the other one and they faced disappointment and rejection again and again and again. They couldn't find any work, which is the story of many people across this country. One guy stopped. He became discouraged. He stopped going. 
He stayed home looking at television, became very argumentative and toxic with his wife, drinking beer, getting on the phone, talking to his other negative unemployed friend, and he just gave up. The other guy kept looking for a job everywhere he could go. Every time he could get an opportunity, kept asking people, networking, checking the newspapers every day. Kept going everywhere he could, trying to find a job. You have too much education, you're overqualified, you won't be here long enough. He kept going, he kept going. He went to a place and said, look here, I tell you what, if you can't hire me, and I know you can use my talents, abilities, and skills, I don't want to sit home and do nothing. Just, just let me do some volunteer work. You don't have to give me anything, all right? I just want to work, I want to be busy. Guy said, okay, it's on you now, but don't, don't expect me to give you anything, it's okay. This guy came in and worked. He was the first one there. The last one to leave was the best employee there. About four weeks later, one of the top managers quit. They were looking for a replacement. Guess who they selected? This other guy. This guy who was volunteering his time. He got the job. What was the difference between the two men? Eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is judging on what you see, judging according to appearances. But mind sight is how you interpret what you see. One guy said, it's not possible, it's over, I'm finished. I can't do it. I can't make it. He surrendered. I've faced rejection again and again. I'm not going anymore. There are no jobs out there. But this other guy, he felt that in spite of the no's and rejections, in spite of how bad the economy is, in spite of what the newspapers are saying, that it's possible that somebody somewhere will give me a job. He just kept going, thinking it was possible. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we have to do with our dreams. Because things happen to you in life that you can never, ever anticipate. And many times when those things happen, you want to give up. I remember when I was in broadcasting, when I was a disc jockey, I became very controversial, not only being a disc jockey, but I felt that radio was something that you not only entertain people with, but you also empower them, you educate them. And I got fired. I didn't just leave, they fired me. They took my microphone. I thought that was who I was. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't. I had to do something else. And I didn't know what else I could do. See, here's what I'm looking at. What are the uses for your life right now that you haven't even reached for yet? See, I believe that when you don't have enough encouragement to act on your dreams or ideas or you're not enlightened enough, that life will act on you. Some decisions are major decisions. And also there are a lot of small decisions that we don't make. That they tax our minds, they drain our energy. They create a lot of anxiety and nervousness and mental torment because we don't take care of it. We decide not to decide, which is a decision. Deciding to decide, to act,